Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a chameleon in graphite and the tips and techniques that I'm going to share in this video can be applied when drawing any type of reptile skin. So my first aim, like when drawing any animal, is I will map in the eye first. Now I'm starting off with the centre of the eye where the pupil and the reflection is and then I'm building up the shape, the lights and the darks around the structure of the pupil. Now chameleons obviously have very different shaped eyes to any other animal, they move independently, they are very unique. So the section that I'm working on here is technically the skin but it's still the eye. So I do want to make sure as always that I get my lights and darks in the right place. Now as well as that I am also making sure that I'm focusing on my contrast. So I'm mapping in my main shadows at the moment and then each additional layer that I'm adding I will get that graphite slightly darker and then again I will just be always reinforcing my tonal values. Now when I was drawing this and focusing on my contrast I always had the image of a pyramid in my mind. I wanted to make it look like the pupil at the middle of the eye is sat on the very top because that is the shape of a chameleon's eye. If you have a look on any royalty free sites you have a good look at a range of chameleons they all have eye shapes like this so I really did want to make sure that I captured that early on. Now just like with any drawing we're trying to make it look like a three dimensional object on a sheet of paper. If I don't have my shading and my contrast right it will look very two dimensional and flat. So you can see here that I'm using my eraser, I'm using some harder pencils like a 2H to get that shading that's very very subtle in place. Once I'd finished with the main structure of the eye I'm going to start to build up the skin around it. Now one thing that I did notice, this was the first reptile drawing that I've done in graphite, is just how much the skin texture varied. Some sections, like what I'm working on here now around the nose, looked much smoother than anywhere else on her body. The skin on the body, and we will get to that shortly, did contain much more of a bumpier textured appearance. So I had to make sure that I used my pencils differently with a slightly different layering and um, sort of technique with that graphite and graphite pencils in order to replicate the difference in skin texture. And you'll also notice that throughout this tutorial I've got extra bits of paper, I've got some bits of the putty eraser up close to the camera and that's because all of this has been recorded in real time for my Patreon channel. So the entire real time tutorial, there are no bits sped up, there are no sections cut out, all of this is available on my Patreon channel now and you do get the reference photo, line art and full material list with it if you would like to draw along. So if this or any of my other in-depth slower tutorials are of interest, I will link my Patreon in the description below. So when it came to this section of her face, you can see here that I'm approaching this very differently and that's because the skin texture here takes on much more of a rougher and textured appearance. I wanted this to look like it was bumpy. Now in order for me to do that, I had to get my shadows dark enough and then my highlights bright enough. This goes back to the contrast and the range in my tonal values that I mentioned earlier on. I want to also make sure that I'm adding the highlights on these scales and on the skin in the right place in relation to that section of the body. One thing that I did find is because of how the little bumps in the skin can be raised if one is larger than the other, you can see there's a real variation in the size here, that it would alter how or where that highlight was positioned in that section of the skin. So something that's very tempting to do is think, right, okay, there's a highlight on the top left corner, so I'm going to add the highlight there on every single little bump that I'm drawing. But you can see here now, when I'm using that eraser to remove the graphite, those highlights are in very different positions. So I did really have to study this photo closely in order to replicate this accurately and as closely to that reference photo as I could. Now one thing that I speak about in the Patreon version is it's very easy with something like this to get overwhelmed with the process. There is a lot going on here so I do focus on very small sections. Now this area here is a prime example. 
I'm only sketching in a few of the main little bumps that jump out first to me when I look at that reference photo. I'm then going to focus on some shading and then I will map in the rest. Now the one thing that I cannot stress enough if you're working on something like this is try not to draw in every single little bump or scale. We really don't have to go to that extreme unless you're working with hyperrealism. Hyperrealism is where you put your artwork and your reference photo side by side and you shouldn't be able to tell which is the drawing and which is that photograph. I personally like to achieve something that's more photorealistic so you can still tell that mine is a drawing but that it is resembling that reference photo. So in order for me to achieve that, I don't feel that I have to add in every single bump or scale on a reptile skin. And when I thought of it like that, and I didn't put that pressure on myself to add in every little bit of detail, this came together on this section quite quickly. You can start to see here how it looks like I have got a three dimensional bump. It looks like my shadows are a deeper crevice. And then I have those highlighted sections next to it, which makes it look almost like a water droplet that sat on a bit of grass. You want to have that three dimensional look. So before I start working on the lower part of her mouth, if the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up and a like because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I'd be very, very grateful. I also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. So her lower jaw here did have a bit more of that smoother, shinier appearance, like the top part of her mouth. So I don't want to add too many bumpy textures here. I have to make sure that I'm adjusting how I'm using that pencil and my shading techniques. So when I'm working with my graphite pencils here, there are a few things that I like to bear in mind depending on the texture that I'm trying to create. So the length of the lead, how sharp that point is, how much pressure I'm applying to the pencil, even where I'm holding that pencil. So sometimes I'll hold it close to the lead, other times it's in the middle of the barrel or potentially right at the end of that pencil. It is going to depend on what I'm trying to draw, but all of this is explained in that real-time tutorial because it's all recorded with a voiceover while I draw, I'm able to explain every single process. So I certainly found that when I started working on the body, this is definitely one of the areas where I started to put a bit more pressure on myself and I started to get a bit overwhelmed with the process. Now I soon did find a way of overcoming that and it was just about focusing on one or two centimetres at a time. Normally I would work on two or three square inches, but with this I had to really break it up into micro sections. I had to make sure that I didn't look at anything too big because I would end up trying to skip past stages because I was feeling overwhelmed. Now the reason why is because this is just a larger area. When I looked at the face I was able to tell there was the eye, the bit of the eye socket above, that little bit of like the horn helmet at the back of her eye, then her cheek and so on. Those sections made it less daunting because that reference photo had the structures on the face to break it up. Whereas this area here across her back and shoulder is one solid area. So here, as you can see, I've worked on a completely different section. This is the area above her forearm and I'm now starting to work on really small triangular shapes. I'm focusing on my main lights and darks, but mainly the pattern. I was able to then break up this section far easier and quicker because I was only focusing on the markings that I could see rather than the scales or bumps on the skin at the time. Now the way that we approach a reference photo in order to replicate this in our drawing is going to be very subjective from artist to artist. If you do like working in solid layers then there is nothing wrong with that at all. But if you do feel yourself getting overwhelmed by the process, it will probably be because you're working on too much of a larger area. Work on a something smaller, you know, one or two square inches, or even here, as I say, a centimetre at a time, and you'll find that you'll end up creating that drawing far more effectively.
So something else that I felt with this section of the portrait is it didn't really make a whole lot of sense until I got the arm and the front part of the chest drawn in. Because we've got some more diagonal curved lines here which you don't have on her face, it made this section of her body look very different. Now it wasn't because I had drawn it wrong, it was just because it was a different texture and it hadn't been merged yet onto her head. So it's almost like a section of the portrait was just floating. Now that I'm working on the air of the neck here, that section to the left doesn't look nowhere near as out of place. It now starts to look like reptile skin. So if you're working on any part of your drawing, regardless of the subject, and there's something that's bugging you, but you don't quite know what it is, I'd always recommend to work on something next to it first before you make any drastic changes. If you know that your outline is right, it's accurate early on, and you're happy with the placement of your lights and your darks, it's probably just because you don't have the area of fur or skin drawn in next to it to give it that proportion and that perspective. If, however, once you do then draw in the rest of the portrait, all those sections next to it, you're still not happy, that's when I would recommend to go back and make some changes. So I have quite a few videos here on YouTube about drawing fur with graphite. And the one thing that I talk about there is the importance of fur length, fur thickness and fur direction. Now the way that we achieve those three things are with how we use the pencils. Now with this, the process in those three elements is the same. So you can see the scales underneath the arm here, those little highlighted dots are significantly smaller in size compared to anywhere else on her body. So that goes back to, although this isn't fur, I have to make sure that I'm adjusting the pencil strokes or my eraser marks when I'm adding my highlights to make sure that I'm replicating that texture. And the texture again is so important because as I started working on the arm, there was hardly any bumps or texture on the skin at all. This was much smoother in appearance. So I'm working a lot more with my shading techniques, building up my contrast gradually, really softening out my pencil strokes so that I am showing that this section of her body has much more of that smoother appearance. And at the beginning of this video, I mentioned the importance of getting your highlights and shadows in the right place to make sure that it doesn't alter what that animal looks like. Now, this is the same when we're working with the hands here. I had to make sure that those shadows and highlights above where her fingers or those, those sections of her hands have opened up, I've had to make sure that those curved shadows and highlights are traveling in the right direction in order to make it look natural and accurate. If I make those lines straight, I'm gonna make it look like her hand is a little bit deformed and that it's not attached to her arm in the right way. So how we're curving our shadows and our highlights, where they're positioned, all of these things really are important and it's something that I do put so much focus on, especially in my Patreon tutorials. Now the last element for this portrait is the tip of the finger. So this was a special portrait that I did for my sister because sadly Mabel the chameleon has um, recently passed away. So I did want to make sure that I could give Kaylee something to um, really remember her by. Now this is one of her favorite photographs because she was a tiny little chameleon and she was just perched on the tip of my sister's finger. So here, this was an important part of the portrait but I didn't want to add too much detail here that would distract from Mabel. So I have added in my main shadows and highlights to make sure that I'm getting the shape of the finger accurate, but I'm really softening out those shadows and those transitions. In order to do that, I am using a range of blending techniques with the pencils by softening out those layers as I go, but I'm also using an eye makeup applicator here to apply the graphite. You can see there that putty eraser where I'm removing some of that graphite and that works really well when drawing skin. In some cases, if you use an eraser like a Tombow Mono eraser or a battery operated eraser, you can end up removing too much graphite when you're working on smoother sections of skin.
And to show this, because I do get some questions regarding human portraits, I am going to make a selection of tutorials in the mediums that I offer on Patreon, so acrylics, pastels and graphite. And I am going to make some human and people portraits there to feature in full length tutorials, just so I can show how I personally like to approach drawing skin, because the way that I layer there and use the pencils are very different. So I do hope that the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful. As I've mentioned, if you would like to draw along to the real-time tutorial of this chameleon, it is available on my Patreon channel now, which is linked in the description below. I also have a Patreon library on my website where you can see all of the tutorials that are immediately available on Patreon before you sign up. Now the wonderful thing with Patreon is that you can stay for as long as you want or you can cancel at any time, it's really flexible. So as I say, I really do hope this was useful. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. I am more than happy to help if I can. And I'm gonna be uploading another video to YouTube next week. But as always, thank you so much for watching.